for joining us today at Jesus is Lord Church. I am Pastor Kevin McGinnis. I'd like you to take a moment. I'm excited about today's message. Begin to share this video right now. I want to hear from you as I'm preaching. Comment. Let us know that you've been blessed by today's message. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back.
Come on and raise your praise in this place. We come to exalt you, oh Father, because you're so mighty, Jesus. You're so great, hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We have nothing to fear because you are our God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you all the praise tonight, oh Father, because you're worthy of it.
In the middle of a song Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Popularize Death is defeated The King is alive Praise the Lord We yeah. 
shout a voice of triumph now how many of you are crazy about Jesus anybody crazy about Jesus then I want to count of three I want us to lift up a praise to our God that will paralyze every demonic attack against you one two three lift a praise to God shout come on shout 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 you're not shouting you're just standing there shout if you got victory I said, if you got victory, come on another time. Give the Lord another shout. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Well, I got the victory. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, I got the victory. Tell somebody else, say, you got it too. Tell somebody, I got the victory. Tell somebody else, you got the victory. Shout, we got the victory. Now, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. Oh, hallelujah. Let God arise. Let God arise. And his enemies will be scattered. Shout if you got faith in God. I don't know what you're going through. Don't lose your faith. I don't know what you're facing. Don't lose your faith. I don't know what you're facing in your family. Don't lose your faith. I've got the victory. Anybody got the victory? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now shout with a voice of triumph. Stand with me for the reading of the Word of God. We want to welcome everybody that's watching tonight, those that are watching online, those that are watching on Facebook, those that are watching on YouTube. I would like you to help us spread the Word of God by hitting that share button right now. And if you're scrolling through social media, stop right there where you are. I don't want you to miss 
what God has given me tonight. I'm preaching the second part of my message that I began last Thursday on seek. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Romans, Paul's letter to the church at Rome. Romans chapter number 12, verse number 11 through 13. I'm reading from the Message Bible. Romans chapter number 12, I want you to stand if you're not. Verses 11 through 13. How many of you are hungry for God? Paul said, don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled in a flame. Be alert. Be alert, servants of the Master. Cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times, but pray all the harder. Shout, I refuse to give up. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians. Be inventive in hospitality. Now look at it on the screen in the NIRV. The NIRV. Paul said in the NIRV translation, never let the fire in your heart go out. Keep it alive and serve the Lord. You may be seated. I want to talk to you tonight about getting your passion back. Getting your passion back. I know a lot of people, they're passionless. They go to church, but they don't have any fire. Some have even lost their desire to come to church. They've lost that hunger and that zeal for the things of God. But Paul said this, never let the fire in your heart go out. Can we say that together? I'll never let the fire in my heart go out. Shout, I'll keep it alive, and I'm going to serve the Lord. In Psalm 9 and 10, the psalmist said, those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who who seek you. God said, I will never forget the person that is seeking after me. Jeremiah said, seek the Lord with all your heart. He said, if you'll seek me and search for me, you'll find me if you'll seek me with all of your heart. Everybody say, all of my heart. I love what he said in Isaiah. He said in Isaiah, I'm a jealous God. I'll have no other gods before me. He said, I want to be in first position in your life. And you and I, we need to be seeking God first and fervently in this hour that we're in. Say amen. This is not an hour to be lukewarm. It's not an hour to live indifferent. But this is an hour to be plugged into the power of God. This is an hour to seek God for divine direction for our lives, for our families. How many of you are going to seek God in this hour with all of your heart? Shout amen. God said, I will never forsake those who seek me. And of course, we have the classic translation in Matthew 6 and 33. He said, if you seek the kingdom of God above all else, everybody say above all else, and live righteously, he will give you everything you need. Now, it's very simple. There's nothing complicated about it. God said, if you seek me first, everything you need will be added unto your life. And this is what I've learned about church people and people that have been around a long time. They begin to seek God for what's in his hand rather than seeking his face. But this is what I learned. When you seek God first, everything you desire, he will add into your life. Say amen. If you seek his face, you can always receive what comes from his hand. Shout somebody. Psalm 10 and 4, it says, in his pride, the wicked man does not seek God. In his pride, the arrogance of man, the wicked man, does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. By a show of hands tonight. How many of you know people in your own family that have no room for God? They may be nice people. That's wonderful. They may be morally good. But the Bible says the definition of God for the wicked are those that have no room for him in their lives. God's definition of wickedness is a person that does not seek God. We always think of the wicked or as the perverse and the murderer, the liar and those. But the Bible says the wicked is a person that does not seek after God. Everybody shout, that's not us. Say, that's not me. Because we're here tonight because we have a desire. And we have an overwhelming hunger for more of the living God. How many of you are desperate for Jesus in the hour that we're living in? Can you raise your hands and shout hallelujah? So I want to say that again. The wicked in God's sight are those that do not seek the Lord. 
But I love the Word of God. The Word of God brings clarity to our life. The Word of God illuminates the pathways of our life. But God said, he says, the wicked are those that do not seek God. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody said, well, my family, they're beautiful people. Well, Jesus said, and God said in his word, he said, those that do not seek me, that shows me that they have no room for me in their life. How many of you got room for God in your life? Clap your hands and shout hallelujah. There are two types of people that are here tonight. There are those who let their circumstances, watch this, influence their enthusiasm. And the second are those who use their enthusiasm to influence their circumstances. There are two types of people in the world today. There are those who let what's going on around them determine their attitude, their posture, and their perspective. And there are those who let what's going on down inside of them influence the climate around them. Say amen, somebody. What's in me has the power and the ability to change what's going on in our society. Somebody shout, what's going on in the world will not influence me, but what's in me will influence and make it impact in the world. Can you shout somebody right now? How many of you believe you have the power on the inside of you that you can change the world by reaching one soul at a time? So what's going on around me is not going to stop me. And what's going on around in our world today is not going to influence me. But what God has deposited on the inside of me has the power to change the climate that is around me in 2022. How many of you here tonight are ready to change the world shout unto God in the house of the Lord hallelujah I said hallelujah two types of people those that are affected by what's going on around them or those that affect what's going on by what's inside them but the word enthusiasm comes from two words enthusiasm comes from Everybody say this with me, entheos. It means, n means in. Everybody say n means in. If you've ever heard or studied any type of theology, you understand that theos means God. So we understand the word enthusiasm comes from entheos, n, everybody say it again, n means in. And theos means God. So the word enthusiasm, it literally means, as I read this today, this blew my mind. It means in God, or it means to be filled with God. Everybody say, in God. Everybody shout, I'm in God. And I'm also filled with God. So we understand that true spiritual enthusiasm isn't something you work up. It is not a product of your environment. It is not determined by the level or the degree of your education. But it is a posture of your heart and your time that you spend with God. Somebody say amen. It is born literally in the presence of God. By the power of God. Everybody say it's born in the presence of God. By the power of God. Now watch this. Those of you that love the word of God, shout I'm ready. I love what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse 57 and 58. It says, Paul said, but thanks be to God, or but thank God. Somebody thank God tonight. I said, somebody stand on your feet and give God thanks and praise. Come on, you can do better than that, my God. He said, but thank God, or give thanks to God, that he gives us the victory over sin and death. Praise him tonight if you got victory over sin and death. Paul said you've got to express your thanksgiving to God. He said in everything give thanks, Second Thessalonians, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Paul said... You, you and I as believers should express thanksgiving or enthusiasm for God. Paul said, but thank God because he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, I'm the most blessed person on the planet tonight because I'm in God and God's in me. I said, I live in God and God lives in me. Oh, hallelujah. 
I am crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that liveth, but it's Christ that liveth in me. In this life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who gave himself for me. Somebody shout hallelujah. So we need to understand that Paul said that we should express or be enthusiastic about God. Oh, hallelujah. How many of you are enthusiastic? How many of you still have enthusiasm for God? I'm going to give you another opportunity to respond. I want everybody right now that is here tonight to express your passion and your enthusiasm for God to get on your feet. If you believe God is in you, the hope of glory, shout somebody in the house of God. Because of what our God has given us, he said, my dear brothers and sisters, Paul said, be strong. Tell somebody, be strong. Tell somebody, I got a word for you. Be strong. I don't know what you're going through. Come on, encourage somebody. Somebody's heart may be broken at home watching, but I've come to tell you tonight, be strong and be immovable. Say amen. Everybody shout, I'm strong. I'm immovable. And then Paul said something. I'm going somewhere. He said, always work. And I love this. He said, whatever you do, always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord shall ever be wasted, useless, or in vain. Can somebody say amen? Oh, hallelujah. Everybody shout, whatever I do for God, I've got to do it with all of my might. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that what the Bible says? Everything you set your hand to, to do it with excellence, to do it with all of your might. Can you say amen, somebody? And here's what I love about this thought. It's not what you do that makes it meaningful, but it's the one that you do it for. Can somebody shout hallelujah? It's not the thing that makes the action meaningful, but it is the intent of the heart of who you're serving. Can you say amen? I'm going to say it again. It's not what you do that makes it meaningful but it's the one that you do it for give your God the praise for that's why we're all here for tonight now let's look at David the Bible says David in 1 Samuel we understand who was a shepherd boy he was a boy a shepherd boy who became king he was a kid who became a king he was a boy that was anointed by the prophet Samuel And the Bible says when he was anointed of the Lord by the prophet that the spirit of God came upon him from that day forward. Everybody say mightily. And here's a kid who became a king. Tell somebody I got a story about a kid who became a king. As a king, David was filled with entheos as a king. Somewhere along the way, like so many people, tragically, he was excited. He had entheos, but along the way, he lost that excitement. He lost that enthusiasm. He lost that fire. That's why Paul said, he says, be a fueled and a flame. Don't let the fire that is in your heart go out. I want to tell everybody here and those that are watching, this ain't a time time to hide the light and this ain't a time to let the fire turn into a billow of smoke and ashes but this is the hour to let the fire burn brighter and hotter for the Lord Jesus Christ can somebody shout a loud hallelujah for we're not going to hide the light I wish I'd get a witness from somebody in the front he said but we're going to let our light shine before men that they'll see our good works and glorify our father in heaven give him praise tonight if you are a world change so you know the story David and Goliath the Philistine army was at war the Bible says with the Israelite army and they would often pick a warrior to do battle and declare the winner based on those two and the Philistine had a huge giant named Goliath Israelites had nobody that would stand up to the giant And here's a little kid, the shepherd boy in 1 Samuel 17. He's on his way to bring food to his brothers. And he looks up towards the opposition with enthusiasm. And I want you to watch his enthusiasm and confidence in God. Look at the screen. 1 Samuel 17. What he said to the Philistine. He said in 1 Samuel 17 verse 45 and 46. You come against me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. 
But this day, shout now. He said, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. And I'll strike you down and I'll cut off your head. For this very day, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army. I'll give your carcass to the Philistine army, to the birds of the air and the wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. I've come to tell you tonight there's still a God in Israel. I don't know what's going on in your life, and I don't know what's sitting on the throne of your heart. But there's one thing I know. There is still a God that is on the throne. And it doesn't matter who's sitting in the White House. There is still a God in Israel. Can somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. And with God, nothing shall ever be impossible. And not word, word for God shall fall to the ground. It was David that declared in Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6. The psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Everybody lift your hands and say, I lack nothing. Everybody shout, I lack nothing at all. I love what the psalmist said. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Oh, hallelujah. He'll bring peace into your life. He's your shepherd. He's responsible to protect you and defend you and care for you. The psalmist said, he restores my soul. Say it together. He restores my soul. He goes on to say he leads me. He guides me. He comforts me. He's always with me. Shout he's always with me. He guides me along the right path even for his name's sake. That even though when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Say amen. He said, he said this, he said, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He says, you prepare a table before me right in the presence of my enemies. He says, you anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over or my cup overflows. Amen. He says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Let me tell you something tonight. And you need to shake off that spirit of fear and that spirit of opposition and discouragement. And I'm telling you tonight that sickness is not going to follow you. Depression is not going to follow you. Fear is not going to follow you. Lack is not going to follow you. But there's angels called goodness and mercy. And they're going to follow me all the days of my life. I came to pray tonight while some of you are sitting on the Holy Ghost I've come to tell you that I still got a passion for a God that is responsible to take care of me all the days of my life tell somebody goodness and mercy is following you not just on Thursday and Sunday but all the days of your life we see three things or three clues where David's desire for God or passion comes from. Number one, he trusted God daily. Say that together. He trusted God daily. How many of you remember when he said, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I'll be glad in it. He trusted God daily. Number two, he walked with God daily. Number three, he worshiped God daily. The key word is, everybody shout, every day. Daily. Aren't you glad his mercies are new every morning? Somebody shout, great is thy faithfulness. When I was faithless, he remained faithful. When I was going to give up, he never gave up on me. Because he promised to never leave me nor forsake me, but to be with me unto the very ends of the age. Can somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. He's with you through thick and thin. He's with you in the valley. He's with you in the mountain. He's with you when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. He's with you when people leave you, when people abandon you, when people walk out on you. He said, I'll always be there. Give the Lord a shout if you got faith in God. David knew the secret of success in God. The secret was found in daily abiding. Everybody say daily abiding. How can he fight a giant as a little kid? I'll tell you why. Because he looked back in previous days. He trusted God when he was taking care of the sheep. And a bear came and attacked. God gave David the strength to destroy the bear. Since he trusted God that day before that battle, 
He could trust God in this day for the battle that was ahead. How many of you have got victory in the past? A miracle in the past? Anybody ever been healed of a disease? Lift your hands and shout praises to the Most High God. Aren't you glad that sickness couldn't take you out? Because God's got his hand on your life. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Sometimes you need a flashback. You need to look back to what God did in the past. You need to look back to how God healed you in the past. How he restored your health in the past. How he gave you the strength to overcome depression. And he gave you victory in the midst of a trial and a test. Because you need to understand that same God David said that gave me the victory over the bear. Come on and over the lion is the same God that's going to give me victory today. And that's where my faith is. And that's where my passion is. I've come to tell somebody, if God did it for you before, God is able to do it again. I want every mother to jump up and shout every father to lift your hands in praise. God did it that time. He'll do it this time. And he can do it every time. You remember the same David when the Ark of the Covenant came back to his hometown where the presence of God dwelled. David went out, not fully dressed, started a wild worship party. So much that his wife looked out the window, she was embarrassed, began to mock David. But David couldn't contain himself. David was a worshiper. Worship is not something you do on Thursday and Sunday. Worship is something you do every day you're alive. He began to dance and praise God with all of his might. But his wife despised him. Don't you let anybody, don't you let anybody make you feel insecure or insignificant when it comes to praise to your God. Somebody shout hallelujah tonight. We've got to seek God with all of our hearts. We've got to worship with all of our hearts. We've got to praise God with all of our hearts. We've got to seek him first. He's got to be first in everything. He's got to be at the forefront of everything you do. He's got to be the main part of the equation in your decision making. We've got to seek God with all of our hearts. But David was excited about God. There were two main seasons or chapters in David's life. Number one, the first season he had passion and excitement, enthusiasm. And the second season, he lost that excitement. He lost that passion. If you fast forward to in time when he was king, there was another story in 2 Samuel chapter 11. Pay attention, please. It says in a time when the kings were off to war. In the springtime, when they should have been out of battle, David actually stayed home when he wasn't where he was supposed to be. He climbed up. He went up on the roof, and he saw something he should have never have seen. He saw a woman taking a shower, and it was he wasn't where he was supposed to be, wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. He saw something he wasn't supposed to see. Are you listening to me tonight? He did something he should have never done, and it cost a lot of people a price that they should have never had to pay, and they lost. And it all started when he stopped spending time daily with God. Are you listening to me? There was a time in your life that you were so excited about God. You were on fire for the Lord. Everyone you came into contact knew what you stood for and knew who your Savior was. But like David, there was a time he was fighting for God and there was a time he was on fire and enthusiastic for the Lord but then there was a time that he lost that fire. I'm talking about many people that I pastor. There was a season you were so excited, you were so hungry, you had such an appetite for God but you allowed the enemy to rob that fire to steal that passion away from you. But the hour is coming that the church is about to make the greatest comeback in all of history. God is raising up a church that is on fire, not lukewarm, burning bright for Christ. I want to show you the difference. 
as a young boy, as a kid with enthusiasm, David ran into the battle to serve his God. But the later as king, with apathy, David walked on the roof to serve his own interest and comfort. How did a man who had so much spiritual enthusiasm and passion as a kid lose it as a king? Because he got comfortable. He became distracted. The answer is he took his eyes off of his calling and he placed his eyes on his comfort. Listen to me, comfort is not as important as calling. There's nothing worth sacrificing your calling for. Can you say amen? My question to you tonight is this. Which one represents you? Are you full of passion? Are you excited about Jesus like never before in all of your life? Are you serving your calling? Are you focused on your calling? Or are you focused on your comfort? Are you focused on your career? Or are you focused on your calling? Hear me tonight. Everyone I believe in this room loves God. But there's a totally different there's a totally different thing than loving God and being set apart for God. I know a lot of people, they love God, I love God, I love God, I love God. But when God puts his hand upon your life and there is a purpose for you to fulfill in this life, you cannot settle for comfort over your calling. You cannot choose your career over your calling. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you've ever received a prophetic word over your life, it is not going to come without a demonic attack against you. But I want you to know this. The devil is defeated and you are more than a conqueror and you are going to see that dream come to pass. Jump up and shout and give him praise. My God, wake up. So, what are you more interested in, comfort or calling? Are you still running into spiritual battles, knowing that God is with you? He'll never leave you. Come on, say amen. Shout hallelujah. He'll never forsake you. Shout amen. There's everybody in this room has a calling on their life, a divine calling on you tonight, today, every day. Have you drifted into spiritual complacency or are you still as hungry today than more than you've ever been in your life? Matthew 5 and 6 says, hunger, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness or the things of God shall be filled. It's hunger that leads to passion and passion that activates power. Hunger is what leads to passion, and passion activates power. Somebody said, well, pastor, you know, I don't have time like I used to to seek God. You better make prayer a priority. Prayer has to be a priority. Spending time with the Lord has to be a priority. Seeking the Lord has to be a priority. Studying the word every day has to be a priority in your life. Say amen. Putting God first has to be the priority. Pastor, why isn't things working out in my life? Well, when God's first, everything works. Otherwise, this word is a lie. And I might as well stop preaching it. But if God is true, say amen. If you know God cannot lie, it's impossible, not in his nature. The very essence of God is truth. Can somebody shout hallelujah? And when you practice the principles that are outlined in the word of God, you will be blessed all the days of your life. I want to talk to all the young people tonight. You better get on fire before you're left behind. I'm telling you in this hour, we've got to burn bright. we got to shine. we got to arise for the Lord Christ, Jesus Christ. Entheos. Calling, purpose. Come on, somebody. You got to make up your mind. Am I going to choose comfort and complacency over passion and calling? 
David had it. Then he lost it. How many people do we know that once had an on fire walk with God, backslid, lost it? Let me see your hand. People that you grew up with in church, we just assume everybody's on fire for God. I don't know what planet you fell off of. The Bible says in the last days there will be a great falling away. I told the pastor the other day this is a sifting season. The weed and the tares. But I can honestly say tonight I'm more in love with Jesus than I've ever been in my entire life. I want God to do something so awesome on Long Island that my God, it's going to send shock waves right into the belly of hell. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Give the Lord praise right now. David once had great desire that he lost it. Nathan the prophet confronted David on his sinfulness and after the confrontation, watch this, David finally came to his senses and he realized how he had fallen away and he cried out to God in a very powerful, powerful way. Psalm 51, create in me a pure heart. Can we say it together? Create in me a pure heart. Oh God, and say with me, renew a right spirit within me. Restore to me the joy. Say it together. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Hear me tonight, God can restore you. But you got to get back to where you once were. You got to get back to where it all began. Let me see your hand if you love Jesus with all of your heart. Lift it high to the Lord. He's watching. Watching over the sapphire seal of heaven's gate upon the earth. For as though that will lift their hands even right now as your hand is raised in worship and in truth. You got to get back to where you where you were before. Just like Jesus told the church, the believers, God spoke in Revelation 2. Verse 4 and 5, look at the screen. He said, "Here's your problem essentially. This is what I've got against you. I hold this against you." He said, "You are you have forsaken the love that you had at first. You've walked away." My God, how many have walked away? People think when pastor's talking like this, he's talking about this little church. I'm talking about the entire world, the body of Christ. Many have walked away. Many have been led astray. Many have lost their desire and their passion for God. I'm so glad there's still a handful of people, just a handful on Long Island that still have an overwhelming hunger and intense desire for the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not important about how on fire your mother was or how on fire your father was or you are on fire. Have you had a divine encounter? Have you experienced a heaven sent visitation and you know there's nothing in this world that can ever satisfy you like Jesus? This is what's going to happen according to the word of God. Give me 2 Corinthians. Read it loud now, please. Don't continue to team up with unbelievers in mismatch alliances. For what partnership is there between righteousness and rebellion? Who could mingle light with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and Satan? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? Read that one more time, that part. Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What friendship does God's temple have with the demons? For indeed, we are the temple of the living God, just as God has said, 
I will make my home in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. For this reason, come out from among them. Come and out where? Come out from among them. And do what? And be separate, says the Lord. Touch nothing that is unclean and I will embrace you. I will be a true father to you and will and you will be my beloved sons and daughters says the Lord Yahweh almighty. Give me second Timothy. They will ignore their own families. They will be ungrateful and ungodly. They will become addicted to hateful and malicious slander. Slaves to their desires, they will be ferocious, belligerent haters of what is good and right. With brutal treachery, they will act without restraint, bigoted and wrapped in clouds of their conceit. They will find their delight in the pleasures of this world more than the, more than the pleasures of the loving God. They may pretend to have a respect for God. But what? in reality, they, they what? Read that again. They may pretend. They may be pretend. Everybody shout fake and phony. Fake and phony. Go ahead. They may pretend to have a respect for God, but in reality, they want nothing to do with God's <laughs> power. Stay away from people like these. Keep reading. For they are the ones who worm their way into the hearts of vulnerable women, spending the night with those who are captured by their lusts and steeped in sin. They are always learning, but never discover the revelation knowledge of truth. History has given us an example of this with the Egyptian sorcerers Janus and Jambres, who stood against Moses in their arrogance. So it will be in the last days. In the last days. With those who reject the faith, with their corrupt minds and arrogant hearts, standing against the truth of God. But they will not advance, for everyone will see their madness, just as they did with Janus and Jambres. But you, Timothy, have closely followed my example and the truth that I've imparted to you. You have modeled your life after the love and endurance I've demonstrated in my ministry by not giving up. The faith I have, you now have. What I have hungered for in life has now become your longing as well. The patience I have with others, you now demonstrate. And the same persecutions and difficulties I have endured, you have also endured. Yes, you know all about what I had to suffer while in Antioch, Icon Iconium, and Lystra. You're aware of all the persecution I endured there. Yet the Lord delivered me from every single one of them. Somebody shout, the Lord delivered me. The Lord delivered me. Go ahead. For all who choose to live godly all as who worshipers. Choose to live godly. For Go all who choose to live godly as worshipers of Jesus, the anointed one. Will also experience persecution. Will also experience persecution. Go ahead. But the evil men and sorcerers will progress from bad to worse, deceived and deceiving, as they lead people further from the truth. Yet you must continue to advance in strength with the truth wrapped around your heart, being assured by God that He's the one who has truly taught you all these things. Remember what you were taught from your childhood from the Holy Scrolls, which can impart to you wisdom to experience everlasting life. Through the faith of Jesus, the anointed one. God has transmitted his very substance into every scripture, for it is God breathed. It will empower you by its instruction and correction, giving you the strength to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the paths of godliness. Then you will be God's servant, fully mature and perfectly prepared to fulfill any assignment God gives you. Jump to your feet if you have a passion for Jesus and give him the praise and the glory tonight. I said, if you got passion for Jesus, give him praise and give him glory tonight. You have forsaken your first love that you had first. You've walked away. You let it go. You surrendered it. You've forsaken the love had at first, Revelation says. In other words, he says, you've forsaken that love. He says, you didn't lose it. You left it. Just like a husband leaves his wife. Just like people backslide and walk away from God. When you lose your passion, you're finished. 
When you don't understand your purpose for living, you're finished. When you spend time away from the presence of God, you cannot survive as a new creature in Christ. That's why we come to church on Thursday. That's why we come to church on Sunday. We've got to live full of faith. Because the Bible says there'll be a great falling away from the faith. So we've got to feed our faith. And when you feed your faith, your doubts will die. You've forsaken the love you had at, everybody shout, my first love. Some of you, Jesus is not your first love. He used to be, but other things have taken his place. God has to be first, not career, not fame, fortune, riches, not a business, not a college degree. Nothing wrong with those things, but God has to be first. Say amen. Say amen again. He said, you've forsaken your first love. And then Jesus said, consider how far you've fallen. I want you to consider tonight. Consider how you've drifted. Consider the intimacy you once had that you walked away from. Consider the power of God that was in you and his presence, my God. It never left you. Thank God he's married even into the backslider. Consider how far you've fallen. And then Jesus said very simply, just repent. Repentance means to change direction, change the way you think, and do the things you did at first. Clap your hands and say amen. He says do them again. What do you do? You walk with his presence daily. You trust God's goodness daily. You worship him daily. Daily. You don't do it out of duty. You do it out of delight. I'm not here tonight out of obligation. I'm here out of love. I can't praise him enough. I can't shout enough. I can't tell people enough what the Lord has done in my life. How many of you love Jesus tonight? Who have you told about him? How have you witnessed for him this week? Who have you shared your faith and your testimony with since this year began? David said, restore to me what I had first. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Say amen. There are two types of people in the world, those who are th those who are the ones that let circumstances and fear and worry and anxiety influence their heart, their posture, their own spiritual temperature. And there are those that let their enthusiasm, their passion, born at a very real fire and presence of God, influence their world, influence their environment, influence their atmosphere. They build the faith of those that they're with. Two types of people, say it together, two types of people. There are those who walk with God and have faith and trust God. Say amen. Oh, hallelujah. Pastor Ron Carpenter, why are you texting me right now? There are those who don't just lose it, lose the desire, lose their passion for God. But there are those that have literally intentionally left it. I'm not leaving Jesus. Because he'll never leave me. Oh, you may want to give up, but it's time to get your chin off your chest, square your shoulders, stand on the word of God, and declare, if God is for me, nobody can stand against me, and I am more than a conqueror. No matter what I'm going through, I'm coming out stronger, more powerful, more anointed, more blessed than ever before. Don't leave it. Don't lose your passion. Don't lose that intimacy with God. I want to talk to everyone here tonight, whether you're serving and no one sees it or worshiping and everybody knows it. Do it for God. I said do it for God. Every message I preach, I preach for God. Every song you sing on this platform, do it for God. 
Because you do it for people, you're going to be discouraged. People come, people go. But God remains the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I love what he says in Malachi. I'm the Lord God. I don't change. I don't have mood swings. I don't need an attitude adjustment. Because I'm God. I'm unchanging. Can somebody shout aloud hallelujah? God is in control. I don't care if things in your life may be out of control. But I double dog dare you to jump up right now and give God a shout. Because God's about to bring you out. Raise your praise. Raise your voice. Shout with the voice of triumph. Two types of people in our world. Those who let all the stuff on the outside determine what happens on their inside or those who let the work of Jesus in their hearts impact the world around them. I don't know about you, but I believe the light that's in me is so bright, there's no darkness that could ever put it out. I'm going to say it again. I believe the light is so bright and so strong on the inside of me, there's no darkness around me that could ever put it out. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. I hope that we have a church full of people ready to let the presence of God penetrate a dark world. Can somebody say amen? John said, one in five, the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness, say it together, the light shines in the darkness. Pretend you're a Baptist preacher. Shout the line, shite shines. Shout the light shines. Use your preaching voice. The light shines in the darkness. Shout and the darkness can never extinguish the light. Can you say amen? I'm telling you right now, this is not a time to hide in a corner. This ain't a time to relax, sit back, and wait for the rapture bus. It's time to work. It's time to do the works of God. It's time to preach the gospel. It's time to heal the sick and cast out devils. Don't pitter patter and patty cake. A God that loved you so much, he gave his son for your freedom. Tell somebody it's time to shine. Let me tell you, parents, why your children are wishy-washy. Why your children are practically backslid. Because you don't have a fire. You don't have a conviction. And you don't have a standard. This ain't a time to accommodate people's lifestyles that don't want to change. We've got to preach the word of God. We've got to be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort, admonish. And not tell you the truth. How can I say I really love you and ignore sin cycles and patterns of behavior when you're close to me, when I know ultimately it's gonna send you to hell? That's not love. When you tell somebody they're okay, love confronts. When you've got conviction, you speak the truth in love. How many of you want to see your family saved? Go to them. Tell them the truth before it's too late. Somebody here tonight needs to pray and ask God to forgive you of all your sin. He said, if you confess it, I promise you I will forgive you and cleanse you from all of it. But there is no restoration spiritually until there's first a decision and a step of admittance. There is no deliverance without admittance. There is no healing or salvation without admittance. That's why he said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
That's why he said 1 John 1, 8 and 9, if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all of our sin. There's a part we play. Can somebody shout amen? amen. Anybody love Jesus here? Can we stand in his presence and say this with me? Heavenly Father, can we all stand, lift our hands and close our eyes and not be a distraction to everybody in our row and say, Father, tonight I come to you humbly in your presence. I ask you, Father, forgive me, cleanse me from every one of my sins. Transform me, make me new. Fill me with your spirit so that I can become what you've created me to be. So I can walk with you. So I can trust you and worship you every day. My life is not my own. I surrender it all to you tonight. Help me, Lord, to do what you've called me to do with passion, enthusiasm, desire, because you saved me. My life belongs to you. In Jesus' name, everybody shout amen. Be seated. When God lives in your heart, you're grateful. People that have been forgiven and understand the value of that grateful people that are generous are grateful for the young lions do lack and they do suffer hunger but those of us that seek the Lord shall never lack any good thing doesn't mean you will not go through a trying time a time of test time of temptation, a tough period, a bad season, challenging chapter. Amen. Can I get a witness from somebody? But one thing you do know, you shall not lack for any good thing. How many of you want to prosper like never before? Keep God first and everything will fall into place. Keep God first and everything will fall into place. Be the example as a parent. Be that godly example. Do not be wishy-washy. Do not be an, another unstable Christian. But be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor is never in vain. How many of you have children? Can I see your hand? They're watching you. They're watching you. They're watching you when you miss church intentionally. They're watching you when you choose money over ministry. They're watching you when you're leading them astray. Very rarely have I ever got mad at a child. They have become what they've seen in their parents. I've seen more children miss out on the call of God because of parents that it would not lead them in the truth. God's raising up a generation of five-fold ministry in this hour. Future prophets are sitting in this room. Future pastors and evangelists, teachers. Come on, somebody. Apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists are sitting in this room, and God is equipping them and preparing them for the work of the ministry. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil's in trouble because the church is rising up on Long Island. I said the devil is in trouble. He's about to have a nervous breakdown because your children that he sought to destroy are about to step into their ministry, are about to fulfill God's plan for their life. Somebody shout hallelujah in the house of God. I've come to tell you tonight that no weapon formed against your family shall be able to prosper. David said after thee I'll seek for I desire to see your power and your glory manifest in the sanctuary 
The day is coming. People will step on the property and tumors will fall off their body. See, you don't have the faith for it. I can tell by the way you're responding. The day will come that people will not even have hands laid on them and blind eyes will pop open as soon as they walk in the building. Come on, bring your faith up. That's the problem. You don't have a lack problem. You've got a faith problem. Somebody shout hallelujah. Without faith, it is impossible to receive from God. July 17th through the 27th, we're putting up the tent. Ten days ablaze. The gentleman that, he actually painted this jacket. You like this jacket? He made one for me and my wife and blessed us. You like the jacket? You do? I could care less. Throne Studios. Check them out on Instagram. I'm giving him a shout out. He makes jackets for all the ministries. Pastors. He reached out to us and said, I want to make you and your wife a jacket. This is hand painted. You know what he does, Catherine? He goes into services and he sets up huge, huge walls of canvas. And when the people of God are worshiping, the Holy Spirit inspires him and he paints right there live during the worship. Check them out. Throne Studios. He's coming to paint under the tent. He's coming to paint under the tent. (laughs) Judah, let me hear you roar! (laughs) Could you imagine how many of these jackets it would take to make one for you? (laughs) We'd have to just put the tent on you. 700 gallons of paint from Sherwin-Williams to paint. You know, you can't stop Judah. Does anybody even know what Judah means? Let me hear you praise your king right now. Let me hear you shout if you're a warrior in the house of God. Stand up. I'm telling you right now, I challenge your faith every service because the devil's trying to take you out because he knows what's about to happen. The devil's trying to destroy you because he knows the level of your destiny. And I've come to tell you that many of you are about to see that dream activated this year. How many of you are generous? Run to the front if you're generous. All you stingy people stay in your chair. Stingy people are in their chairs. Generous people are at the altar. Oh, it got quiet. Shout again. Oh, I come to give I come to get the devil mad tonight. I come to kick the devil in the teeth tonight. Everybody out there, you stingy or you generous? Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. I said, oh, glory to God. Millions of dollars are being released for people this year. You don't want it, I'll take it for the work of God. Millions of dollars are being released to the church this year. Millions of dollars are being released to people that have big dreams. Somebody shout hallelujah. People are coming out of poverty this year. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. You're not going to live in that same cycle of poverty and lack. God's about to bless you and give you double for the hell you've been through. Can somebody raise your voice and shout hallelujah. I've come to tell you, you're going to have more money than you've ever had before. your hands. I command all pain to leave your body right now in the mighty name of Jesus. How many of you believe in God for something big this year? So for it. Tonight. Just come take some of these envelopes right here. Just slide over, slide over, slide over. Come take an envelope. Come take an envelope. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Don't miss it. So for it. So for it. So for it. 
So for it. Hallelujah. 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 Come here, Kim. Lift your hands. You're going to have more money than you've ever had for the work of God and the mission. You will accomplish the mission. And you will fulfill the dream. And that which was even spoken over your parents and things they had in their heart that they never seen come to pass. You're going to see it with your eyes. Glory to God online. Get a seed in your hand. Get some other envelopes for the people that are coming. It doesn't take a rocket scientist for this. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Come here, Lori. While this anointing's on me, come. In the name of Jesus, complete healing. Glory, there it is. Everybody get your best gift of, to God in your hand. Use your faith and sow with great expectation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mark your calendar, July 17th. It's going down. Souls, 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 souls. Soul, soul, souls online. We love you. Thank you for being with us tonight. Be sure to be here this Sunday. We miss many of you that have not returned to church yet. Amen. You can only wear a mask and a space suit so long. Come out of hiding. Come back to the house of God. Hallelujah. Everybody giving generously, shout aloud, hallelujah. Come and honor God. Bring your envelope. That means there's something in the envelope. I pray you were blessed by today's message. Listen, if you're ever in the Long Island area, Olga and I would love to connect with you. I promise you, you'll come as a friend, but you're going to leave JILC as family. I want to hear from you. If you have a testimony, something God has done in your life, be sure to follow us, message us, follow us on all of our platforms. Also, go check out our website. You can stay connected with upcoming events. I'll see you right here next time.